Yep, it happened to me. My credit score recently just went down 24 points. This was something that definitely could have been avoided, but it happens to the best of us. And this is what I've learned and I wanted to share with you guys so it would not happen to you. But Nam, aren't you a credit guru who talks stuff about improving credit scores? Can I still trust you? I believe so. I know quite a bit about credit, but sometimes I make mistakes. This is something I probably should have known better, but I wasn't paying attention and it got the best of me. What's up winners? My name is Nam. If you're new here, welcome. Here we talk all things personal finance and credit. Start now by subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. So in today's video, I want to discuss why your credit score went down and what you can do to prevent this from happening in the future. So let me give you guys a quick backstory of how my credit score went down 24 points. No, this wasn't due to late payments. This wasn't due to frequent hard inquiries, nor had to do with large balances on credit lines. My credit report is pretty clean. There are no late payments. I only applied for a new credit card within the last six months. And my utilization is roughly around 3% with a total credit limit of around 100,000. As a shameless plug, if you are needing a credit repair, I do offer services, link in the description. But why my credit score went down, you may ask. My credit score went down because one of my accounts got shut down due to inactivity. And the worst part, this is one of my older accounts. I've had this account for anywhere between six to seven years with no blemishes. The odd thing about this account is that I only used it one time. And this was when I opened the account. Ever since then, I just never closed the account and just never used it. The credit line that I'm talking about here is PayPal Bill Me Later. This is what it was called years ago, but now it's called PayPal Credit. I mainly used this when I was buying something off of eBay and I just wanted to have more time to pay it off without paying interest. At the time, the benefits were roughly about the same. You could buy things over $99 and pay it off within six months. If you were able to pay off that balance in full within that time frame, no interest would be charged to you and you just have positive information reported to the credit bureaus. But since I only used this one time, I kind of forgot about this credit line. I knew this was a PayPal account, but I also had a PayPal account with a different credit line, so I kind of got the two mixed up. So without any notification, I woke up one morning, checked my credit score as a normal person would, and I see my score drop 24 points. I was scrambling to think like, what the hell just happened? I had no late payments, my utilization was low, then I came to realize that it was an older account that got closed. I talk about keeping credit lines open all the time, spending it every once in a while just to keep it open, but I fell into this pitfall of forgetting to use it. And once the account gets closed, there's really no way to revive it from the grave. I take a full accountability and it was a mistake on my part. Honestly, I'm surprised that this account remained open for as long as it did. But looking back at it, I rarely bought anything off of eBay as soon as Amazon became more popular and I had a Prime account. Unfortunately, the best education is through previous mistakes. So since you guys know my backstory of what happened to me recently, let me share with you guys what you can do so you won't fall in the same footsteps. The first point I wanna make is organization. If any of you guys have been following my channel for a while now, I do talk a lot about credit cards and I have quite a bit myself. The thing is that once you have so many credit lines available to you, you can get them mixed up or you just tend to forget about them. In all honesty, there's only a few credit cards that are in my daily rotation. I usually pay closer attention to credit cards or credit lines that have annual fees because I don't want to be paying for something that I'm not using. Since the PayPal credit line was not a traditional credit card where I could see you physically, this was something that just went over my head. So moving forward, any type of credit lines that does not have a physical credit card, I need to figure out a way to add it to a spreadsheet or add it to a budgeting app such as Mint so I could physically see that I have this account open. The thing is that I knew I had this account open when I was looking at my credit report, but aside from all my budgeting apps, I never accounted for this account. Unlike other physical credit cards, I have it all listed out and attached to my accounting software so I can see exactly what are my expenses and the balances that I have on these cards. So if you ever decide to get any type of credit lines that involve a particular company, such as PayPal, Dell, or any other online retailer, you just need to set up a system that allows you to remember that you have it. So moving forward, get yourself organized, figure out a way to physically see the accounts that you have available, so it's a constant reminder that you do have this credit line open. Now this moves me on to my next point which is credit utilization. Credit utilization is when you have a credit line that's available to you and you wanna keep it below a certain percentage, preferably 30% or less, but the lower is better. Essentially, the lower your balances will be, the better it will be for your score. Some people have this misconception of having credit card debt, thinking that it is beneficial to their credit score, and this is far from the truth because having high credit card balances does more harm than it does good. I have seen some people paid off their credit card debt and it was only a couple of hundred dollars, and their score jumped up 20 to 40 points. Aside from keeping your balances low, you have to use the credit line that is available to you. Because in turn, when you really think about it, these lenders and creditors, they're giving you credit, hoping that you will carry balances or make mistakes so they can make more money off of you. These credit card companies make money in other ways such as charging fees and payment processing, but they make quite a bit just from people carrying balances. Even with that PayPal credit line, if I were to make a purchase, 
I would probably be good for the next six years, but who knows, I never make that mistake ever again. I generally recommend people to use their credit lines at least once a year. Some recommend fewer such as every three to six months, but I never had a problem using a credit card at least once a year just to keep it active. So now let's keep it moving with my next point. Open up fewer credit cards. As a YouTuber who talks about credit cards, I have been more and more selective about opening up new credit cards just due to the fact that it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Yes, opening up a new credit card gives you more access to credit, but in turn your credit utilization could be much lower. But if you were to open up a new credit card, you'll get a hard inquiry and your credit age will look much younger and both things have a negative effect on your credit score. The idea is the longer that you keep the card, the better it is for your credit score in the long run. Again, as long as you keep it open. Because once you open too many credit lines and you forget to use them like I did, your all time high credit score can just drop a bunch of points if it ever gets closed. If you ever wanted to get an 800 plus credit score, the majority of people in this range, they really don't have that many credit cards. Typically individuals who have 800 plus credit scores, they have anywhere between three to five credit cards at most. And their account's age is usually 10 years or older. Of course, this is not set in stone, but it does make sense. If you do have fewer cards, it is less to manage and your credit age does not get affected by applying for new credit cards. But again, sometimes opening up credit cards does benefit your account if you have difficulty getting a higher credit limit. But just keep in mind that this will definitely hold you back from making your account look older. Now let's move on to my next point, which is tracking your credit score. This is important for anyone who wants to stay on top of the credit. Sometimes I get people to ask me questions like, why is Credit Karma showing me this number? But when I apply for a car loan, the credit score was actually much lower. The main reason why this is, is because there are different types of credit scores for different types of situations. People who are mortgage lenders versus auto lenders versus credit card companies will look at different things to determine your eligibility. Credit platforms such as Credit Karma or Credit Sesame is just an estimation. Lenders who are handing out mortgages or auto loans will take a closer look at your installment lines of credit. Meaning that if you ever had a loan before where you had a set amount of money and you would just have to make repeated monthly payments until it is paid off, this will be looked more closely compared to how you handle your credit cards. I'm not saying that they will not take your credit card payment history out of consideration. I'm pretty sure that they will, but due to the financial product that you are applying for, this is what matters most to them. The same thing goes with credit cards. Credit card lenders want to see how you handle revolving credit. Revolving credit is basically when you have access to credit and once you use it, you pay it off and then you get access to credit once again. Keeping track of your credit score is important, but knowing what creditors and lenders look for is even more important. Now let's keep it moving with our next point, is knowing when to close your account. Even though that account brought my credit score down without me even knowing, it is best to know whether or not to keep a credit line open. I was going through a phase where I was churning a lot of credit cards. I was getting credit cards every few months and getting sign-up bonuses and chasing those points. And whenever I was done with them, it just went into a storage box. But the thing about these type of cards is that they had no annual fees. So it really didn't bother me to close it. All I had to do was just use it every once in a while just to keep that account active. So when closing your account should be taken into consideration is after getting that welcome bonus or if your credit card has an annual fee that you would have to pay. The key reason on why I say consider closing the card within the first year is that this generally does not have a significant impact on your credit score. I understand that when you sign up for your card, it dropped your score by a couple of points, but when you close the account within the first year, it may drop it a couple of points as well, mainly due to the fact that you have less of a credit limit. But again, this kind of balances out because once you take off a new account from your accounts that are open, this will generally look like your credit age is much older. So once you sign up for the card and you got whatever you needed from it, just give it a second look to see if it's worth keeping. I don't wanna give any conflicting information, but if you are a person who's looking to build or trying to repair their own credit, even if there is an annual fee, the credit line may be worth it to keep. Generally, when you have a bad credit score, it's already hard as it is to open up new lines of credit and it's even harder to get a high credit limit. There are plenty of credit lines out there that will give you a large line of credit, even if you have bad credit. But having a bigger credit line tends to have much more of a positive effect on your credit score. So if you are a person with a good credit score, go ahead and just reconsider keeping that credit line with an annual fee. But if you are an individual who's trying to build a credit, the annual fee may be worth it. So when it's all said and done, make sure you keep your credit organized, use your accounts every now and then just to keep them open and close them whenever necessary. Before I close out, today's sponsor is by Webull. If you ever wanna get started in investing, they are currently running a promotion by the end of November where you can get four free stocks. You can get two free stocks value up to $250 just for signing up and you can get an additional two free stocks value up to $1,600 after making a deposit of $100. I'll see you guys in my next videos.